Hey, good evening, everybody. What an awesome, mighty God, a papa, a friend that we have in Jehovah, yod heh vav -Hey. You know, today's the uh, 26th, and that's his number. It's important, guys, I think it would be very important to you to kind of know some of the Bible numbers. And the calendar days, you can just meditate and concentrate on his goodness, on his love. Today's 26th, the gospel means the gospel and Jehovah. I mean, Jehovah is the gospel. He's some good news that he would leave all the way from heaven, come here to be with us. So we could have an eternal big brother and an eternal father, man, a bridegroom, man. Jesus is the darling of heaven, the adoration. The Old Testament saints love him. The New Testament saints love him just the same. But the New Testament saints are going to get their bodies first, their glorified bodies. And we're a special bunch, guys. Why don't you please pray about being special to the Lord? Lord, I know we're a special bunch. We're your bride. We're the body of Christ, Jesus. We're, we're man, called out. Ecclesia, called out assembly. We're called out of this world. We're called out of sin. We're called out of Sodom and Egypt, Assyria and Babylon. We're called out. And Lord, we've come out. Every time I've come out of the closet, why don't you just come out of Babylon? Okay, just, just knock off the drama and just come on out of Babylon, will you? Amen. Now, two days from now is the 28th. And you guys remember Rabbi Kaduri, he died on January 28th in 2006. And he said, I've left a note, but do not open it for one year. And so on January 28th, 2007, they opened it. They put it on, the, on his website. They had 200,000 followers following them. Okay. <clears throat> and it was up for two days before they realized that his note was declaring who the Messiah is, the Jewish Messiah. This guy was like 102 years old when he died, man. Jesus had been coming to visit him in his sleep. And he recorded some of his conversations and some of the things he would write and quit writing. And say, I can, he told me to write no more. Sounds like the Apostle John, right? Keep those things hidden. Keep those things sealed. Sounds kind of like Sean Mitchell, don't it? Until they're to be unsealed. Well, this note that he had declared the name of Jesus, Yeshua. It was an acrostic, you know. It had all the letters for Yeshua. And uh, pretty wild. He's the Messiah. And they took that note down, got rid of that entry, on the website, oh, he's nuts. Kaduri's nuts. Now, they revered him as the greatest rabbi of all time, especially living and alive right now. All the rabbis adored this guy. He was the rabbi of rabbis. And so that date is coming up here the 28th. You know, we told you, we, everybody knows the, the world is on the brink of war. Now, this is all part of... This is all part of diva devil, devil diva, Satan diva, the way he rolls, okay? And God's letting him do it. God's using him as his little pawn, guys. And this guy does such an elaborate show. And uh, then he's going to end up getting killed at the end and be worthless, be thrown straight into hell. Hell will be open 64 times a year, and I want to be sitting there right there, right where the, in the devil's location, Every time it's open and laughing myself, hurting at this guy. You're such a dumb, dumb dude. Not too much light where you are now, huh? All those demons that have personally entertained me to destroy me and kill me and harm me and slow me down and throw just some cogs in the wheel. I want to know where they are too. Lord Jesus, please let me see these guys. And I'll go down there, and just before we have worship service, when you open hell up every Saturday, it'll be called the Sabbath day then. 
every Sabbath day and every new moon when the moon is bright. The full moon. God's going to open hell up and I'll be looking straight for that devil. I'll also be looking for a bunch of you idiots who made fun of the Bible code. The Bible says you're accursed. If you scorn, if you laugh at and scoff the Bible code, The Lord says, you're no good, man. You need to repent of that, or I'll be seeing the Lord Jesus open hell up, and I'll be looking for you joyfully. All ye who scoff the code, all ye who scoff the plain text. You guys remember in 1968, about six, seven years ago, um, this lady's vision, her her uh, dream was renewed and it was going back making its circuit on YouTube. Uh, the 1968 Norwegian prophecy. She was a 90-year-old woman and an evangelist come to town and she told him her story, her vision, her dream. And it, it was wacky. It was weird. It was 1968, and TV had just come to Norway. And she was talking about how television was going to get bad. And it was going to go from its one channel there in Norway. We had three in the United States, plus PBS. We had four channels when Norway only had one. And she said television is going to get so bad they're going to start showing things on television that are only meant for the bedroom. And people's hearts are going to get so hard that they will never again listen to penetrating preaching. When God uses men to preach the word of God and it's meant for their hearts to turn them into repentance so they will please the Lord and not miss out on their blessings. That was 1968, 55 years ago. 55 years ago, this 90-year-old woman had this vision. And she was warning everybody. And she said, and it's going to blow the world's mind when World War III begins. It'll be a very short-lived war. Because World War III, guys, is what brings us into the seven-year tribulation. The 1,000-year reign of the new Messiah, Barack Hussein Obama. <clears throat> Only three and a half years for that cat. I love how God rolls. But this is what they think. And she said, World War III is going to be very short-lived. And the top-notch nations, the first world nations, are the ones who's going to be taken out first. And everybody who's left alive and remaining in those Countries are going to be running to third world countries. And the third world countries are not going to want them. <clears throat> and they will hate them as they ha were hated by them. She's saying all this in 1968, 55 years ago. And she talks about the United States being taken out by nukes. Why, wow, that's not in today's church's ideology. The NAR ain't preaching that, and the Word of Faith ain't preaching that, and that Baptist church down the street ain't preaching that. They're preaching, oh, where's my flag? Where's my flag? Okay, God bless America. Woo! God bless Babylon. They totally gotten away from the penetrating preaching. It'll penetrate and get right through your heart. You know, the Word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, and it pierces way beyond meat and bone and sinew. And it is a divider. It slices. It is the discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Not just the results of what happened, but it shows the intents, the reasonings, the whys. And she declared this in 1968, and people kind of forgot it. It was stirred back up about six years ago, and your pastor never showed it, talked about it, did he? Forget the woman, forget Nor Norway, forget her being 90, forget this being 1968, but the facts. <clears throat> Are the preachers preaching the facts? Of what God's preaching, of what the Bible code has shown us, of the Poseidon nukes, 
taking out America. I mean, you can't get more first world than America, right? I love God's way, and it's about time. I don't know about you, but I am war smack dab out. But just like men of old, faithful men who've been called, you know, when all these people talk about you got to endure to the end, they're getting total mixed up sanctification and justification. To be justified now, we trust in the endurance of Jesus. To be sanctified now, we endure to the end. Okay? There is an endurance to the end, but it has nothing to do with salvation and me getting to heaven. I'll get to heaven if I quit. If I quit tonight, I'll get to heaven. I'll just miss my crowns. It will be the most foolish thing I would have ever done. Gideon. It says about his 300 men faint. They were wore out, yet they pursued the enemy. When you're tired, when you're beat down, when you know that this world has nothing to offer, it's only lies, it's emptiness, there's, it's vain. Why am I even existing here? This place is just... Because God has a time frame. He has an appointed time. And we rejoice in that. In the middle of our sorrow, in the middle of our weariness, in the middle of freezing to death while you're out there in the cold with no one to help, you keep on working for Jesus. Nobody sees. Jesus does. Nobody cares. Jesus does. And that's why we do it all for Jesus. And that's why we encourage you, man, do everything with your heart, soul, mind, and strength, your thoughts, your intents, your deeds, everything. Do it Godward. Do it for him. Do it for his pleasure. As long as Jesus is pleased at the end of the day, boy, that means everything to me. That means everything to you, right? Pleasing Jesus. That's why we come on here in the evening and we encourage you. Finish your day well. Read the Bible. Uh, if you've sinned against somebody, get it right with them. Get them on the phone. Say, dude, I just, I blew up. I had a bad attitude or whatever your sin was. Get right with these people. Don't have any open-ended sin on your part. We're going to blow it along the way. We have to get right with our fellow man. Okay? It won't keep you out of heaven. It'll just keep you from being resting well. And we're told to always go make right our brother. Always go make right your brother. If we have offended a brother, go make it right. Make it right. Make it right. Don't let it linger. Don't let the sun set on your wrath. Okay? Don't let the sun set on your sin. So we don't let the sun set. We just, boom, we charge on and we say, Lord God, help us. Here we go. And we encourage each other along the way. And we ask each other, hey, how, how you doing? You okay? You okay? How can I pray for you? Don't quit. Don't give up. Endure to the end, man. Endure to the end. Let's do this together. Remember, I'm in my wheelchair and you're in your gurney and I'll push you from this wheelchair. Let's cross that line, man. Leaning on Jesus. Remember that? Leaning on Jesus, leaning, safe and secure from all alarms. Leaning on Jesus, leaning, leaning on the everlasting arms. Praise God, we're leaning on him. He wants to be more than our lean-to, man. He wants to be our gurney. Everything, all our weight's on him. All our world's on him. All our day is on him. It's all on him and it's with him. Praise God. He's got us walking to. Now, Vondo has put up all three of those links, the countdown to the anniversary when Jesus was crucified, the day he bore our wrath and took our shame. Oh, it was so embarrassing for him, and it was so painful, and it was so dark, and it was so miserable. But for the joy that was set before him, he endured I encourage you for what is ahead. For when we see Jesus, it will be worth it all. It will be worth it all when we see Jesus. All trials will seem so small when we see his face. Amen. For the joy that is set before us, look unto the joy, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Don't quit. Don't give up. Or don't let life bury you alive. You keep on going, you keep on trudging, you keep on praying, you keep on praising, you keep on walking together. Just shy of 79 days, says Vondo. Around uh, 11 p.m. my time, it'll be there. On Sean's clock, the Eastern Time Zone, it'll be there. That's what we're looking at. 
because uh, those tsunami bombs are going to smash on Eastern Time Zone. You know, God is always, God is always Jerusalem-centric. Everything he does is from Jerusalem, Jerusalem, until he starts to pronounce woes and judgments on, you know, Babylon, Egypt, and all the rest of them. Then he's pretty specific about those places. And this, he's, he's pretty, wow, he's wound up about this one. He, he sent 90-year-old women 55 years ago to proclaim a story that people have lost and forgotten, and you know, who cares? Yeah, 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 yeah. It was about a six, seven minute video. All I got to do is look up um, 1968 Norwegian prophecy. And it should pop up 90 year old woman telling her story. And she talked about television being wicked, television being in homes. And people will start mimicking television and they will start to glorify murder and death. And people will start mimicking and cop copying. Man, excuse me, guys. I've been out in this cold all day long, breathing this air. I apologize. It's been a doozy. But praise God, we have the Lord Jesus Christ and we have each other. Amen? Leaning on Jesus. So, where are you guys reading in your Bible right now? Where are you at? Uh, tell us one thing that the Lord really has blessed you with, maybe from today's reading or last night's or the recent reading. What has God reminded you of, taught you brand new? Anything? You know, somebody asked Alexa, the demon. Now, remember, back when we were showing, uh, Vondo has put up that a link to the YouTube video on that prophecy. Check that out. Be sure to check that out. Uh Remember when somebody said, hey, Alexa, who is the Antichrist? And she says, the Antichrist is Barack Hussein Obama. And then, boom, that thing went erased right quick. But it was all on video. People had videotaped it, and it had spread like fire. Well, today somebody said, Alexa, when will the Iraqi dinar revalue? She said the Iraqi dinar will revalue on January 31st. Okay? So, you know, the devil's a liar. He could be lying right there, but that, that, on video, that's what Alexa says. So what are we getting at? That means we're at the verge of America going straight down because Iraq has depegged itself from the U.S. dollar. It's no longer attached to the U.S. dollar. So when the Iraqi dinar goes up, the U.S. dollar will be going down. And remember what Vando shared with us about Saudi Arabia the other night. They are now accepting Chinese yuan as payment, not just USD. Now people are going to come in and they're going to want to pay with yuan over USD. And as they do that, all those non-circulated, United States notes will be coming back into our warehouses over at the Fed, and they'll be stacking up on pallets. And that means the higher the stacks go on our pallets because they're unused bills, and that was all by design because of quantitative easing. They said, we're going to turn our printers on and keep printing dollars until we're ready to stop printing them. But guys, you don't have any gold to back, back these new dollars. You don't have any assets. You don't have any jewels. You don't have any oil. Ah, that's fine. Who cares? So what that does is every time they print out a dollar, it makes the other dollars less value because this one has no value. And a second one brings it down and a third one and a fourth one. And they went quantitating. They went trillions to, purpose, to purposefully bring down the United States of America and its people and we're right there. All this is there. And this whole war is a shiny to keep people from seeing what I just told you. That Iraq is about to revalue their money. And so is Vietnam. You know, the two nations that we totally obliterated. Wiped out their villages. Innocent children. We went in there and did that. We stole their gold. We stole their uh, ancestry. 
Okay, Cheryl has asked a question about Isaiah 10. Let's go to Isaiah 10. Boom. Isaiah 10. We love Isaiah around here. He was quite the prophet. He was quite the man. He was a prophet, and then he went to church one day and met up with God. Bam, and fell straight on his face. Humbled before the Lord, said, holy, holy, holy. I love it. All right. She's asking about verse 3. And what will you do in the day of visitation and in the desolation which shall come from far? To whom will you flee for help? And where, where will you leave your glory? <clears throat> okay, let's read verse 1. Context, context, context. Woe unto them that decree unrighteous decrees. That sounds like the United States and the United Nations, doesn't it? Okay. Uh, hurting the poor, blessing the rich, murdering little babies, hurting our little children, not letting them go to meet God every day. They have to go to school for nine hours without God. That sounds pretty woeful, doesn't it? A cursing. Woe unto them that decree unrighteous decrees and that write grievousness which they have prescribed their laws. Their laws are grievous. Uh, every time OSHA gives us a new law at my work, there's not a team of us jumping up and down, praising God. Oh, that's exactly what we've been wanting. It always creates more stress. It tightens the belt a little more. It removes freedom every time we get one of those, okay? And these laws do the same thing. Whoa, 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 says God. Woe unto them that decree unrighteous decrees and that write grievousness, which they have prescribed, to turn aside the needy from judgment. Oh, man, America, you're in trouble. Christians, you're, you're busted, man. You help yourself. You fatten up yourself. You embezzle the Lord's money that he meant for you to have to give to somebody else, but you've taken his money and you financed your Super Bowl party with it. And you ladies had to get down there and get your little, get your little rub on. Oh, my little petty. Oh, I got to get my petty. I got I to gotta look after me. I got to have some me, me time. Meanwhile, I'm kids down there starving to death, going through feces piles, looking for yesterday's vegetables. True stories. And we're talking in the billions. Okay? America, whoa, that, whoa. So who's this talking about? It's everybody who mistreats the needy. They turn aside the needy from judgment and to take away the right from the poor of my people that widows may be their prey. Why don't you give? There's a lady right now. You're a widow woman. You don't have much in the bank, but the Lord is leading you right now to take every bit of that out and give to our ministry. And if you'll sow your seed into our ministry, you're sowing your righteousness into your harvest. And there will be bounty and glorious, glorious, glorious harvest in the end. But you better act now, lady. The Lord's talking to you right now, widow woman. You give, you write that check, you send it. You call right now. Does that sound familiar to anybody? Woe to those idiots. American preachers. American prosperity movement, all you Pentecostals who think God equals blessings, so stupid, so deceived, man. Woe to you. Woe, woe, woe. Isaiah 10, woe. Not taking care of the needy and hurting the widows. Mm -mm -mm. What did the Bible say in the New Testament about giving? It says we are not to give out of compulsion when somebody compels you to give. The devil's going to come after you. Never give out of compulsion. Only give, give out of a joyful, generous, benevolent, hilarious spirit. That's the New Testament way to give. There's no specific number. There's no you have to. There's no tithe. You must give 10% of all of it. You give what the Lord has laid on your heart. Now remember, everything that we have is the Lord's. We have nothing of our own. 
nothing is ours. We're, we're, we're sojourners here. And he gave us money on loan to utilize while we're here for him. And it would be great if there were a whole bunch of zeros the day we were raptured and you had utilized all of it and didn't have this big massive savings account that the Russian bomb will take away in moments. And they'll put it right in their pocket. Whoop, thanks. Do you see it coming? That woman 55 years ago told us, told us it was coming. It's a coming. Let's start with verse 1. Chapter 10, this is Isaiah 10, 1. Woe unto them that decree unrighteous decrees and that write grievousness, which they have prescribed. How can, how can I write laws so I get ahead and everybody else gets behind? Verse 2, to turn upside down to uh, aside the need from judgment and to take away the right from the poor of my people, that widows may be their prey and that they may rob the fatherless. Sounds like American church to me. American politics, you know, those rah, rah, re, oh, Trump's going to save us all. Biden, all them, the same government taken away from the little orphans. They'll raise, guys, we need, we're going to raise a bunch of money. The Clinton Foundation for Haiti. Give, give, give to Haiti. Oh, just give, give, give money to Haiti, these poor kids, these orphans. There's so many of them dying over there. Oh, please come give, give to Haiti. And remember what they did with all that Haitian money? They were torturing little children sexually. Pedophiles. Had a humongous pedophile ring there. The Clintons. Both of them. Verse 3. And so what are you going to do in the day of visitation? Every one of you that we've mentioned here. Hey, you, you Christian preachers. Since you're not going to be raptured at the very moment this bomb goes off, what's, what's going to happen to you? Hmm? Verse 3, And what will you do in the day of visitation and in the desolation which shall come from far? To whom will you flee for help? And where will you leave your glory? That's both times. You're right. It's when America is blown off the map, and it's when Nibiru comes by on the sixth seal, just not much longer after that. And Nibiru is the wonderful, beautiful gift from the Lord that just keeps on giving. Smashing, destroying, bringing in asteroids, bringing in comets. Remember, wormwood comes right from Nibiru. And every time, these people won't learn. And they're still stealing from God. They're still stealing from poor people and the feeble and the fatherless and the widows. And so God brings in more judgment, different locations. So yeah, it's that over and over and over. That's how the word's powerful and alive and overlays itself. Verse four. Without me, they shall bow down under the prisoners and they shall fall under the slain. For all this, his anger is not turned away. God will, God didn't stop. <clears throat> God's anger just starts. And it's not his official wrath, the first seal. It hadn't even started yet when he destroys America and, you know, North America, both coasts, and whomever else he decides to blow up that day. Okay? There's going to be a bunch of death and disaster that day. And then, no, his anger's not turned away. His wrath is still poured out still. Bam. Yeah, it's the wrath of God. People just have no clue. It's the gift that's going to keep on giving. We'll be in heaven praising him every time he smashes and kills a bunch of child molesters. God's going to take the children away so they can't be molested anymore. Just the molesters will be here. And God's got a plan for them. The torturers will be here. The, those who take advantage, they'll be left. And God's going to take great advantage on all of them. Vengeance. He'll take great vengeance on all of them. Praise God. Great Great question, Cheryl. Uh, I just got the old book, Faith, Food, and Fasting by Lester Roloff. It's free online from Roloff Evangelistic Enterprises. Okay. Faith, Food, and Fasting. Yeah, he was huge on fasting, guys. Lester, Lester Roloff. He was the one that had the home for all the drug heads and the people who were in trouble. Uh, teenagers. 
who were on the fly on the run, and they were rehabbing them in the name of Jesus, man. And then the state of Texas come against him because they were using the old belt. Jesus said, use the right of correction. Just beat your children. They're not going to die. And so Roloff did that according to the ways of the Lord and Texas, the devil. God bless Texas, you dummies. You need to go back in, in the 70s and study Roloff and how they came against God and God's man. Lester Roloff, man. And you need to do a study on, on his homes and stuff. It was some pretty good stuff going on. And he was, he was bamboozled and accused of a whole bunch of stuff, man. And all they did was turn out some good folks. Good people. These kids who were druggies and they, they were worthless. They were nothing. And all of a sudden, they've got the joy of the Lord in their heart through salvation in Jesus Christ. Jesus is there. The Holy Spirit's there. And now they're, these girls are singing. The boys are sing, singing real, real nicely and everything. And he was training, training them on farms down there in Corpus Christi, Texas, raising uh, fruits and uh, citrus fruits was real big down there at that time. The weather was perfect for it. And so, yeah, the devil comes in, man. And it wasn't long after that, uh, <clears throat> late 70s, early 90s, he was killed in a plane crash. God, God was ready for him to come on home, man. So he came on home. Praise the Lord. What else, man? What else is God teaching you in your Bible reading or Bible questions that you have. The mule walked on in his sermon against TV. Amen. The mule walked on. That's, that is Absalom. When Absalom was riding and that tree caught him, boom, and the mule kept a walking. Amen. There's not too many pastors that preach it like that anymore. There's not, guys. That's what this woman was saying. This woman said people are going to be refusing penetrating preaching of truth. The world hates truth. Guys, man, when you have been walking truth for a long time and you hear these mess and, um, the messages that are being preached, you're like, where are these guys? They don't even know our God. They don't even know him. They don't understand where he is. They are so far removed from his heart. And that's what a, a message should be. T this morning's message, it's coming from the Lord, but not here. Not around the world, not in Norway. It's coming from the desires of their wicked hearts, their lust, th themselves being enticed by the devil. The devil's hooking them up with what they really want. And it's not Jesus. It's the things of this world. And they're so blind, I, I cannot comprehend a conservative pastor who does not know that the Russians are going to blow us up in three months or so. It blows my mind. They think we're going to be around for another 20 years. And they're still calling um, Putin Gog. The Battle of Gog, they are all under a hex. They are, it's a satanic witch's spell. Okay? Late great planet Earth, Hal Lindsey, came out and he, pre he presented this scenario that Gog is at the very beginning of the seven-year tribulation and Everybody believes that today. And you go to the Bible code, it says, no, it's at the end. Jesus comes back and kills Gog. And that Gog happens to be Barack Hussein Obama. A black dude from America. Not a white European. Simple. Okay? And so everybody's under a hex. All these pastors are under a hex. These church people. <laughs> Guys, what is under a hex? Under a witch's spell. The witches all over the world, these top dog witches, have cast spells, and these regional witches have cast spells, and these state witches have cast spells, you know, and it's all the way down, and they're casting these spells against Christians, against pastors, number one. If the pastor can get the word wrong, the message undelivered, well, then the people aren't hearing the message because they're not reading their Bibles. Uh, Cheryl says, and everyone quotes Lindsay. <clears throat> everyone. He's still out there quoting himself. Okay. Now, guys, his book, Late Great Planet Earth, was written by Hal Lindsay for the first two and a half years. Then that woman's name and co-author, what's her face? 
There's your witch. She was a ghostwriter for several other prophecy books that all what? Have Gog at the beginning. She was the great spellcaster, the great witch. I can't think of her name right now. Her letters equal 33. CC. Her first name is C and her last name is C. Oh, Vondo says, man, here's he's he's reading Jeremiah 17. Oh, look at that number. 17? What? And there's something powerful there? Wow. Five to eight. Trust in the Lord and do not put your confidence in men. Hallelujah. That'll get you steered straight every time. But these people want to follow an awesome pastor. Okay? <laughs> like this guy in Greensboro. Miss Ruby said, I want you to check this guy out and, and see, tell me what you think. Right away, boom, he's got the lion paw going on. I am a Freemason. I worship the false light. I serve Lucifer, is what that said. Right away. Uh, Vondo puts the name up there. Her name is Carol C. Carlson, 333. She is a witch. She was the ghostwriter. She wasn't included in the first two, three editions, whatever. But now she's included in every edition. It was always Hal Lindsey, Hal Lindsey. How many of you knew that her name was there, but... Everybody still knows that it's Hal Lindsey. Late great planet Earth, Hal Lindsey. Late great planet Earth, Hal Lindsey. Amen. My birthday's the 17th. Uh, God, God put that number on me, man. God put that number on me. Uh, we were born, I was born at, my brother Davey was born at 10 p.m. I was 10-10. We were close to be, being born on that 18th. Our mother's birthday was the 16th. We were her birthday presents. Poor gal was in labor on her birthday. And there's my twin brother and I being born on the 17th at 10 o'clock and 1010. Davy says, I was born 10 minutes late. He says, I've always been a little slow. That's, that's his reasoning for all that. Amen. Hey, guys, I do appreciate you. Um, what else? Anything else in your heart and mind? I love, I love where we are. Encourage one another daily. Pray for Sean. Guys, okay. Oh, man, dude. He's working some killer codes right now. Awesome codes. <laughs> wow. Okay, just wow. Give the guy a little money, will you? Support him. He's up day and night burning the midnight oil. Pray for his mother. Okay? Pray for one another. It's going to be great when we all see each other. It's going to be great when you and I, this little Bible study, is gathered around the good Lord and Sean while God's debriefing all the entire kingdom of heaven in heaven about Sean's mission coming back. It's going to be neat. It's going to be neat that you believed it on this side. God loves faith. He values it greatly. Get that book out. Vondo has put the link up here. You'll want to download the latest version because he edits it. Okay. Sean edits the thing, and you'll want the latest edition. I don't remember when he last did it, but make sure you got the latest edition. Okay? Get that thing out. And someone asked about having a hard copy of it. You can go make you a hard copy of the book. Okay? It's going to take you a ream of paper plus some, a good copier, printer, a good printer, and a couple cartridges. Yeah, the last update was 12-17-22. Make sure you've got that edition. Uh, Cheryl says, who's in the picture behind you? That's me and my wife. That's Johnny Bo Rock and Roll and Mimi. He's my little Filipina princess. My little Chinese Filipina. Love it, man. Uh, God, you talk about amazing. You talk about a prayer answered. You talk about above and beyond. Helpmate, oh, she's, be, she's above that. She is a blessing on top of blessing. In my sickness, guys, you will not believe all the stuff she's done in hours she was awake and serving me. Incredible to the glory of God. Understanding it's the joy that's set before us. None of that was fun. But it's a calling. And she walked right holy in her calling, man. God's going to reward her and bless her for that. Okay? 
Her name's Pam. Pam and Johnny Boy. I love her. And we call her Mimi, don't we, Vonda? Praise God for Mimi. That was her house name. Yeah. Yeah, the, the, it's the joy of the Lord. It's the joy of the Lord, man. This, this last week, there was not a lot of happiness going on, but there was joy there. Amen? Praise God. Yeah, we are blessed. We are happy. I, I tell you what, when you've uh, been kicked in the teeth by the devil, and then the Lord brings you one of his own, whoo, beautiful stuff, guys. Beautiful stuff. Amen. Thank you for all the prayers. Pray for one another. I'm just going to send you off with blessings, man. Uh, I didn't have any Bible passage to, to share specifically tonight. I did want to remind you that World War III is here, and it'll be short-lived, and the words of the prophet are forgotten quickly. And this old woman, she, she got the word out. I mean, thousands of hits, maybe millions. I think she's got millions of hits. You could find a video with six million hits on it. Okay? Believe the voice of God's real prophets. You know, it, it'll be his voice from his heart, from his arsenal. All right? Amen. I'm going to pray, and we'll go. Lord Jesus, please, I, I pray your blessings all over this crowd. I pray that you'll be glorified. You'll feel loved by all of us. We want to love you. We want to be in your word. We want your word to be our heartbeat, to be our yea and nay, our go and stay. We want to hear your voice. We want to hearken. We want to be your voice and give us wisdom, what to do, when to do it. And I pray for Sean. I pray you'll bless him. I pray you'll bless his health. I pray you'll give him energy that's unexplainable. Just extra fulfilled joy. Uh, thank you for the word and, and the finds, the discoveries he's making. Just keep blessing him in that, Lord Jesus, for our sakes and your glory. <clears throat> we pray for his mother and her healing. That you'll rapture us all alive. We have a desire to be raptured alive. And I pray you'll bless everybody here listening. Right now, <clears throat> as the devil hates this prayer... I just pray you'll take it and listen to it and answer it. And you'll have your way. We bless you in the name of Jesus. Amen.